Chapter 5, A Friendly Face Autumn, oh autumn, it comes when summer ends. Autumn, oh autumn, what happened to my friends? I was finishing a new poem in my notebook as the first bell rang the next morning, and the strange students came streaming back into room 26. I was a little sleepy after my night of heart-pounding adventure, so I wasn't paying too much attention until a perky voice loudly said, Wait right there, Rosie. I'll get your backpack for you. It was Helpful Holly, and she was doing a very good job of being Rolling Rosie's personal assistant. That's okay, Holly, Rosie answered. I can handle it. Rosie did handle her backpack very well, moving it from the back of her wheelchair to the floor next to her table. I'll push you in, Holly said. I can do it myself, Rosie replied. Holly suddenly didn't look very happy. I'm supposed to help you, she said. Rosie gave her a friendly smile. Thanks, Holly. If I need help, I'll let you know. Okay, Holly said, but she sounded really, really, really disappointed. I was sorry for Holly because she was only trying to help, but I was glad to see that Rosie was so good at taking care of herself. After she took attendance, Mrs. Brisbane did something pretty surprising, but then she's always surprising me. Class, she said, I asked you to bring in a list of three interesting facts about yourself in your summer box, remember? Most of the students nodded. I didn't nod because once again, nobody told me to bring in a list. Your answers were really interesting, so I've taken them and made a little get to know you quiz, she continued. We're going to take half an hour for you to answer each other's questions and find out the answers. I've printed out sheets with the questions and places for your answers. After she gave them more instructions, the room got pretty noisy. While the students talked and wrote, Mrs. Brisbane took snapshots of each one, although she forgot to take pictures of Og and me. It was too confusing to hear what everyone said, so I tried to think of three interesting facts about me. Hamsters are pretty fascinating, I guess, because it was hard to narrow my list down to three. Here's what I came up with. One, I am golden, which is true because I'm a golden hamster. Last year, I wouldn't have been the only Golden student in class because Miranda Golden, or Golden Miranda as I called her, was in the room. Two, I have a friend named Og. He is not golden, he is green. Three, I have a lock that doesn't lock, which is true, but I wouldn't put that on a list because it's a secret. Four, I have a notebook hidden in my cage. See above. Five, I was brought to room 26 by Miss Mack whom I love. Six, I am afraid of loud noises such as whistles. Seven, I wish humans could understand me. Eight, I miss my old friends. Nine, you're all making so much noise I can't hear myself think. I was still working on my list in my head when Mrs. Brisbane announced it was time for the students to return to their seats. Then she asked questions from the sheets one by one and the students shared the answers they had written down. I wished I could write the answers in my notebook as well, but I didn't dare get it out because someone might see me and find out about it. Listen carefully, Og, I squeaked to my neighbor. Here are a few things I remember. Hurry up, Harry likes table tennis. I don't know how you play tennis with a table, but I guess Harry does. Rosie has three older brothers. One of them has two guinea pigs. I think I'd like to meet them someday. The guinea pigs, I mean. Slow down Simon has a sister who was in Mrs. Brisbane's class last year. I already knew that. Her name is Stop Giggling Gale, and I miss her. Helpful Holly wants to be a veterinarian, and she volunteers at an animal shelter. Tall Paul Green used to go to a school called Golden Pines. He also collects remote control cars. Be careful Kelsey likes to climb trees, which sounds very, very, very dangerous. Small Paul Fletcher builds model planes. Thomas T. True has a collection of shark teeth, great big shark teeth. Phoebe lives with her grandmother. Just Joey Jones likes strawberry ice cream. Yum. While the students took turns reading for Mrs. Brisbane, my mind drifted to the facts I'd heard. Golden Pines was a beautiful name for Paul G.'s old school. If they had golden trees, maybe they had golden hamsters like me there. I worried about Thomas's shark teeth. I hoped he didn't have the sharks to go with them, as I've seen pictures of them and they are unsqueakably scary creatures. I also hoped Be Careful Kelsey was careful when she climbed trees. She'd already broken her arm and her leg. When the bell rang for recess, the students raced out of the room. I'll hold the door for you, Rosie, 
Holly said as she raced across the room. Okay, Rosie answered as she rolled along next to her. Thomas was just about through the door when Mrs. Brisbane stopped him. Thomas, where's your jacket? I don't need it, Mrs. Brisbane. It's hot outside. It's about a hundred degrees, he said. Thomas, please don't exaggerate. It's a little chilly and you have short sleeves. I want you to check the thermometer on the window and see what the temperature really is. She pointed him in the direction of the window. Way past our table, there was a little thermometer stuck to the window that showed the outside temperature. What's it say, she asked. 58, Thomas answered. Wear your sweatshirt, Mrs. Brisbane said. Oh, or Mrs. Wright will blow her whistle at you. Mrs. Brisbane watched Thomas leave the room. She shook her head and sat at her desk, sorting pictures of the students. Suddenly, a voice called out. Hey, Humphrey Dumpty. I'd know that loud, loud, loud voice anywhere. It was lower your voice, AJ, from my old class. I liked it when he called me Humphrey Dumpty. Hi, Mrs. Brisbane, he said. Hello, AJ. You know you're supposed to be outside at recess, she told him. Can I at least say hi to Humphrey, he asked. Mrs. Brisbane smiled. Of course, but just for a moment. Where have you been? I squeaked as AJ raced up to my cage. Hi, Humphrey. Hi, Og. I miss you guys, he said, leaning in close. We don't have any classroom pets in Miss Becker's class, but we're working on her. She said she'd think about it. But I'm your classroom pet, I squeaked impatiently. Nice talking to you, too, AJ answered. If only he could understand me. Can I take Humphrey home some weekend, he asked Mrs. Brisbane. My new students are awfully anxious to have him, she answered. But maybe if there's a free weekend, I'll call on you. Now you go outside before Mrs. Wright finds out you're inside during recess. AJ raced out the classroom, and I don't blame him. I'd do anything to keep Mrs. Wright from blowing her ear-splitting whistle. Later that afternoon, when I should have been listening to Mrs. Brisbane talk about numbers, I thought about what AJ had said. He and my other friends wanted a classroom pet. Another classroom pet. Maybe they'd rather have a guinea pig or a rabbit or a frog like Og or even another hamster. My spirit sank down to my tiny toes. Just before school was over for the day, as the students straightened up their desks, I heard Holly say, Simon, your backpack is too close to Rosie's wheelchair. What if she had to get out in a hurry? Holly was extremely helpful. Simon picked up his backpack. Sorry, Rosie, he said. There's nothing to be sorry about, Rolling Rosie told him. Uh, it's not my way. It could have been a problem if, helpful Holly started. But it's not, Holly, Rosie interrupted. Okay? She glared at Holly, and I thought Holly was going to cry. I'm just trying to help, helpful Holly said, blinking. Thanks, Rolling Rosie answered. I'm not sure she meant it, and I really didn't understand what was going on. When the final bell rang, I overheard something else that was a little strange. Hey, Paul G., can you touch the top of the door? Thomas T. True asked. Tall Paul shrugged. I don't know. Try it, Thomas said. Yeah, let's see how far you can reach, Simon added. Tall Paul paused and reached way, way up. When he got on his tiptoes, he could actually touch the top of the door frame. Man, you're a giant, said Thomas. You must be one great basketball player. Whatever, tall Paul mumbled on his way out. Just then, small Paul Fletcher approached the door. Did you see how high he could reach? Thomas asked. So what, small Paul mumbled, pushing his way past Thomas. Move along, folks, or you'll miss your buses, Mrs. Brisbane warned the new students. Better hurry up, Harry. Harry was still at his table, slowly stuffing books and papers in his backpack. I don't take the bus, he said. My mom picks me up. Ah, Mrs. Brisbane said. Well, don't make her wait. It's okay. She's always late, Harry said. After a few minutes, Harry left the room. Mrs. Brisbane let out a big sigh and walked over to our table by the window. I always forget that it takes a while to get to know a new class, she told Og and me. But it's an interesting group, and I know you guys are going to be a big help. I'll try, I squeaked. After that, after all, I'm a classroom hamster, and helping the teacher is my job. But I still miss my old friends. Humphrey's Rules of School. Follow the teacher's directions, even if your heart isn't always in it.